And red, white, and scammed. How military veterans are fighting a new battle here at home against an enemy they can't even see. All that and more on Good Money. Coming up on Good Money, our country's heroes facing a new battle on the home front against scammers. We have tips on how to combat them. That's next. Stay with us. Welcome back to Good Money. I'm Tanya Rivero. In New York, thousands of service members engaged in fighting America's battles overseas are now encountering a foe here at home. Young and sometimes inexperienced in the ways of the financial world, these military members are often easy marks for sleazy car dealers, insurance scammers, predatory lenders, and identity thieves. In fact, the U.S. Department of Defense officials recently labeled the situation a threat to national security because these ripoffs destroy service members from the task at hand. Today, Ellie Kay, one of our regular Good Money experts, who also wrote a book called Heroes at Home, will help military families recognize how to avoid being red, white, and scammed. Hi, Ellie. Great to see you again. Hi. Great to be with you today. So first of all, Ellie, we usually see you here on this show as a personal finance expert, but you also have quite a few connections to the military. What are those? Well, we have a great tradition in our family of military service. My grandfather uh, gave the ultimate sacrifice in World War II as a bombardier. My father is a retired chief uh, in the Air Force. My husband was active duty Air Force, a fighter pilot for 25 years. Our son is at the Naval Academy, and when he graduates, he's going to go into the Marine Corps. We have another son that's headed towards the Air Force Academy next year, and then the youngest son eventually wants to go to West Point. So we have all this military rivalry, and I don't know who to cheer for at the <laughs> Navy Air Force game. That's right. Certainly a patriotic family. Congratulations to you. Now, the DOD has labeled the fraud situation among the military as a threat to national security. How does getting scammed impact lives overseas? Well, one of the things that I talk about when I travel the world with my Heroes at Home tour talking to military members and their families are this the whole idea of distraction. And when a military member has been scammed and they may be stationed in the Middle East and they're trying to sort out the identity theft or a car that they don't own that they thought they owned and they owe $11,000 on it, then they're really distracted by all of this financial worry. When a military member is distracted, then accidents happen. And when accidents happen, then we have have catastrophe and possibly even loss of life. So it's a very serious situation. Absolutely, Ellie. And tell us a little bit about the kind of paycheck a, trip, a typical recruit makes and what are some of the questionable ways that local businesses try to get a piece of that paycheck? Well, they only make around $1,800, and that paycheck can go awfully quick, about $1,800 a month. One example of that is at the Great Lakes Naval Training Center, where when these young men and women got off the ship, uh, there were attractive young women that were hired by a computer store to go out and troll and get these sailors to come into their computer store. Now, once they come into the computer store, they're sold a basic laptop computer that's worth about $800 to $1,000, but they are charged a price of four thousand dollars which they normally can't afford so they finance it and so this is an example of the type of scam that's happening and they're just preying on the fact that they're young and naive maybe a little bit lonely and I just think it's really despicable absolutely now what are some other ways that the military is being ripped off that people should be aware of well, one thing to keep in mind when it comes to the military is a lot of the scams are perpetrated by use of their emotion. So right before a military member will deploy, they try to get their affairs in order, and part of that is insurance, of course. And there was recently a multi-state investigation where uh, unscrupulous insurance companies were selling overpriced un and unrepresented, underrepresented insurance policy to service members. Once this was all settled out, these insurance companies ended up paying and refunding $70 million to thousands of service members because basically when it comes to insurance, military members can get SGLI, which is the service members group life insurance. They can get it on base. It doesn't really cost all that much and it will provide for their families in case anything happens. Absolutely. Now, tell us a little bit about the Red Cross scam that's getting a lot of attention among military families right now. 
This is absolutely just despicable because what happens is that someone calls a military family member, whether it's a parent or a spouse, and they tell them that something tragic has happened to their loved one, that they have been injured, and they get the whole emotional thing going on, they show compassion, and then they come in for the sting and they ask for the member's social security number or even a credit card payment so they can get benefits started rolling. So if you get any kind of a call from a Red Cross service member, be sure you go you don't give them any information at all, but you go back to your spouse's unit and go up the chain of command with the unit to really see if this is legit or not. And so these scammers then are, are basically identity thieves. They're, they're opening accounts with this information? Yes, they take the information and they will use the credit card and try to charge up charges on it or they'll take the social security number and they'll use it that way. And um, of course there's internet scams as well where they're, they're uh, trying to get a hold of military family members with similar type of operations. So it's something that you really need to be aware of if you're in the military or if you have a friend or a family member in the military. Just despicable, unbelievable that people would take advantage like that. All right, now. It seems that most of our military is obviously very young. What is the average age of a service member? Do they receive any kind of personal finance education as part of their training? Well, the average member is between 22 and 28, so they are very young. It is a young force. And, you know, the statistics indicate that only 1% of Americans serve in the military. So they're taking care of the 99% of us. So it's quite a, a calling that they have, and it's quite a service that they provide for us. At, as of uh, 2004, military members are now getting financial education as part of their basic training. So they are getting educated, but, you know, some of these people, they just, they're so tired for basic training, they're falling asleep, and they're not aware of all the benefits they have coming to them when it comes to financial resources or some of the scams that might be perpetrated against them. Absolutely. Now, is Congress doing anything to try and help prevent this kind of fraud against our service members? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, this is one of those uh, causes that it knows no bipartisanship. Mm -hmm. I mean, Democrats and Republicans alike, none of us want to see our military members getting scammed. It's just terrible. So what they're doing is they're coming alongside the new agency, the CFPA, which is the Consumer Financial Protection Agency, which will protect uh, the military as well as other civilians. Now, the Pentagon is trying to zero in on automobile dealerships and get the CFPA to come along side and really regulate them a little bit more closely because they tend to be the number one perpetrator of scams against military members. Mm -hmm. But the automobile dealerships are pushing back and saying, hey, it's the lenders that are really doing it, not, not us. us. Yeah. And yet consumer advocates are saying, yeah, but you turn them over to the lenders. So That's right. we'll see how that all pans out. But at least something's being done. All right, Ellie, thank you so much. On that note, we have to take a quick break, but she's not going anywhere because when we come back, we're going to ask Ellie to answer some viewer questions. That's next. Stay with us. Welcome back to Good Money. I'm Tanya Rivero in New York. I'm joined once again by Ellie Kay, America's family finance expert and author of Heroes at Home. In this segment, Ellie joins us to answer some viewer questions. Hi there, Ellie. Thanks so much for sticking around. First question Hi, great to be with you. comes from Sue Simpson of Stillwater, Oklahoma, and she writes in saying, my daughter just got commissioned with the Marine Corps, and I'm concerned about the possibility of someone taking advantage of her financially. Are military members bigger targets for fraud than civilians? What do you think, Ellie? Are they bigger targets? Well, I think in some ways they certainly are a substantial target. And the reason is that military members have two things that civilians might not have going for them in terms of finances. Number one, they have a regular paycheck that's going to be coming in week after week. And number two, they're not going to be uh, fired. I mean, they're not going to be laid off work. And they have that guaranteed paycheck coming in as long as they're in the military. And because of that, military members tend to have better credit until they mess it up. And so starting out with this good credit, it does make them a target. So mom, you need to caution your daughter to be aware that there are scams out there and that she needs to be very cautious and proceed with caution and also plug in to her local uh, Army Community Service Center or her local base center when it comes to financial questions because they can help her out. All right, great advice for Sue there. All right, this next question comes from Steph of Rothenburg, Germany. She writes in saying, Ellie, you came to our Army base to speak last November and I think your message really helped me get through my husband's deployment. Thank you for the work you're doing with military families. I did have a question about ordering items online. You showed us how to pay 40% less by using some websites 
websites, but how do I know if the website is legitimate? Ellie, what would you tell Steph? Well, Steph, thanks, of all, thanks first of all for being a military family and for what you guys do. It was a wonderful trip out to Germany to talk to you, and I'm glad that you're doing well. Now, when it comes to buying things online, and so many military families that are stationed overseas, this is the way they survive because costs of goods on the economy where they're living are so expensive, and the base exchange doesn't always have everything that you need. So to be careful about ordering something online, first of all, Steph, never, ever respond to an email ad of any kind. Even if it's something popular like Amazon.com, there are all kinds of scams going on with that in particular. Instead, go into your browser and type in the name of the store that you're looking for yourself. Don't link through. Now, the next thing is make sure that you check it out with the Internet Criminal Complaint Center. That's IC3.gov. If that company appears there, then obviously you're not going to be doing business with them. And then one other thing you can do is to go to BBB.com. The military actually has a special version of the Better Business Bureau and it's headed up by Holly Petraeus, one of your own, <laughs> as she is a General Petraeus' wife. So that is a really good resource as well, just to make sure that before you order anything it is legit. All right, great advice there. Thank you, Ellie. Now here's one from Justine Long of Fort Drum, New York. My husband's hazardous duty pay was backlogged by red tape and didn't arrive early enough for us to pay our bills. How am I supposed to pay for things like our car loans when he's in the Middle East if I shouldn't go to a payday loan center? Ellie, what do you think of those payday loan centers? Well, the payday loan centers are just terrible. Uh, they're charging as much as 500% interest, even though there is legislation in place to try to cap down on them. They're finding ways to skirt the law, and they're calling it a, a revolving line of credit, or they're charging exorbitant fees. So you should never, ever, ever go to a payday loan center. What you should do in case, and I'm very sorry about your situation, but there is something in place for you. Every branch of the military has a charity. And in the Army, I believe it's AER, which is the Army Emergency Relief Fund. This is set up for gaps in pay such as yours where the hazardous duty pay isn't clicking in and it may take a while for that red tape to get settled. So go into your Army Community Service Center, ask them if you qualify for the AER and go that route first. All right, great. And are these service, these payday service centers a big problem among uh, service members right now? Absolutely they are. Outside of any major military installation, you're going to see them gathered like flies. They're all over the place. And it's really costing service members a lot of money. And it's something that they should avoid because 36% is the cap that they have for interest rates. But by the time they add all these other charges, it's just a really bait and switch type of thing. And it's a very bad habit to get into. So never ever do a payday loan. Are they, so, are they popular simply because they, they place them in close proximity? to army bases well army air force navy any kind of military base yes they prey on military members it's how they stay in business and it is something that is a, a very big problem commanders will warn their troops to not go to these centers mm -hmm. and so i'm adding my two cents worth to that as well if you have a family member or a friend who's in the military be sure and warn them that they don't get caught up in that trap we're so glad you added your two cents in there all right ellie thank you so much for taking the time to answer our questions from our military families